Hi everyone and welcome. Today we're going to have a look at the tools that came with the tool chain that we built last time. Let's say you are in the tool chain directory under the bin. If you do ls, you're going to get the list of the tools that you will be using to build and manage the executables, right? And by looking at the name, you'll be able to figure out what they do. So you get the GDB, and you get the object dump, and then you get um, GCC. If you've watched the reverse engineering course that I've published, um, I've dealt with some of them. Uh, otherwise, uh, you just can, you, you will be able to find information about these tools on the internet very easily. Now, let's have a look at the compiler. If you pass this option over here, you'll get the flags that your compiler uses, right? After the configured with section. And then you get build and host and so on. If, you, if we have a look at the slide over here, now the build parameter is the platform on which the build process runs. Host is the platform on which the compiled code will be running. If building support libraries for other systems, this parameter will have to be changed accordingly. The compiler and those libraries will use different values. And finally, the target. Target is relevant for tool chains cross compilers and it's used to specify the platform on which the code built by the cross compiler will run. Now, the program GDB server allows you to run GDB on a different machine than the one on which the program runs. Therefore, build will be your build machine. Target, the system for which you are building, and host, the system on which the remote debugger will run. Now, if build is equal to host, equal to target, the build is native. If build is equal to host, but then target is different, then the build is cross. If they are all different, the build is Canadian. And then we have the prefix, which define the location of the executable, which in this case is GCC. And then we have the with sysroot. The sysroot is a directory that contains very important subdirectories. And I create a small list for you. So we have the lib, which contains shared objects for C library. USR lib, which contains static library archive files for C library. USR include, which contains the header file for the libraries. USR share, which contains the localization files and so on. USR bin, which contains utility programs for target. The bin, which contains the LD config to optimize library loading path. And this sysroot location can be changed by using the sysroot flag. And of course, you have to provide an alternative path. Right? Now, those are very specific flags. And um, I'm going to let you pause the video. Those are very, very specific. And you will know them if you've been compiling uh, very professional code. Uh, most of them uh, deal with the uh, buffer overflow error, uh, and then you have a math, uh, advanced math library, and then you have the FPU emulation, and so on. Now, I'm going to allow you to uh, pause if you want to go through. Um, of course, uh, by the way, um, these flags might be different on your platform. Those are the ones that I'm getting. Uh, just an example, just to uh, explain uh, how the, the system works, right? 
So I'll give you a few seconds. We, we, we're going to get a very large list, as you can see. So if you printed the minus V option, you probably got a very large list. So more. As you can see, disable support for stack smashing protector. Of course, uh, most of this flag they only allows you to detect the SBO, but they don't do anything to prevent it. Just wanna to make sure we are on the same page, right? And you also get some math library. Some of them are for encryption. Remember to pause the video if you want to go through some of them. Analyzing the C library. LibC is the main library that contains, for example, the POSIX functions print and close, and it's always linked. You don't need to link it manually. LibPthread is the library for POSIX thread functions. Link it with minus LP thread, so basically minus L plus the name of the library. LibBM is the library for math functions. LibRT is the library for POSIX real-time extension, which includes asynchronous input output and shared memory. Static linking. Static library contents physically exist in the executable files that link them. Therefore, executable files that use static libraries increase in size. Static linking removes any compatibility issue as each executable file includes all library it needs. Increases execution speed, tends to create slower build processes, and also, usually, the keyword minus static forces the operating system into static relinking or libraries. That depends on the platform you're working on. Let's have a look at how you can create and use static library. So basically, the first two lines, you create your library. And then, line number three, you are creating the archive for your static library. Line four, you statically linked your library to the executable, right? Also, have a look at the description below that is going to explain how to use minus L and minus capital I. Dynamic linking. Dynamic linking performs the linking process on the fly as programs are executed. Libraries are loaded into memory only once, therefore, linking process might speed up if the code is already present in memory. Dynamic linking might trigger compatibility issues if a library is changed without recompiling the one into memory, if any. Slower execution time, smaller executable files. Let's have a look at how you can create dynamic libraries and how you can use it. So the very first two lines, you are compiling your library, pretty much similar to the flags we were using before.
Line number three is also different because you are not creating an archive for static array link in your library. You are creating a shared library. And in fact, also the extension of the file is different, is .so, right? Instead of .a, right? And line four, you're gonna be using the procedure we've seen before, minus L plus the name of the library. To talk about shared library version numbers, we need to introduce the concept of release version and interface number. The release version is a string appended to the library name which is not included in the symbolic link name used to load the library. So the library libmylib.so10 will have a symbolic link called libmylib.so so that when another minor fix is released as 1011 the only thing that has to be changed is the symbolic link which will need to point at 1011 right so you can keep on updating this library and the program will notice nothing basically because it's going to be working with the link, right? Okay, so interface number. The interface number encodes the interface number created when the library was built. Its format is libname.so interface number, useful when major changes are deployed. How does it work? When the new version 2010 of 1010 is built, they also break backward compatibility. Old programs will not see the update as they can only see one dot asterisk, right? So think about a wildcard, right? So the system is going to be able to grab any version of one, but is not going to be able to see two, right? Because we're using the wildcard system, right? And those are the four types of files that you're going to find on your file system. .a is the library archive for static linking, and then you have the dynamic linking file, load the library at runtime, and that's the fourth line is the actual library, the actual library, right? And that will be all for today. I hope you've enjoyed my class and thank you very much.